Good afternoon. I've been asked here today in order to enlighten you all on the horrible calamities and unbearable cruelties that await you in the year of our Lord, 2013. This is very simple for me to do because as editor of The Onion, I am fully aware of what world events are going to happen in the next calendar year. And in many, if not most cases, I personally had a hand in planning these events. You see, since its founding in 1756, The Onion has been aware of every piece of news before it has happened. We have known well in advance about every war, every major international treaty, and the total box office numbers of every Meg Ryan film. We also knew well in advance about the Hindenburg disaster, and we're very happy to see that happen. The Onion knew about the assassination of President James A. Garfield. The Onion plotted the assassination of President James A. Garfield. We also killed President William McKinley. We have, in fact, plotted every presidential assassination in U.S. history, and we plan to do so much more often in the future. But straying just for a moment from the topic of murder, I should warn you not, not all of these predictions are going to fall sweetly on the ear. Indeed, virtually everyone in this room, uh, other than myself, of course, is going to have a very, very bad year. Uh, and I mean a very bad year. Uh, I have neither the time nor the inclination to go through the audience one by one and tell each person why and how their life will go to shit, but trust me on this, you're all fucked, especially you, sir. <laughs> on that note, let us now hear my extremely accurate and statistically unimpeachable predictions for the year 2013. In the year 2013, I predict that the Onion Media Empire's annual earnings will exceed $1.8 trillion, thereby making the Onion the largest and most financially dominant corporate entity in the history of money. While millions like yourselves will continue to live under the pitiful illusion that we live in a representative democracy, America will in fact resemble some sort of hyper-exclusive plutocracy controlled almost entirely by the Onion and its various subsidiaries. I myself will sleep every night of 2013 on a vast bed of money with my lovely wife Nadine, a six-foot-tall effigy made entirely of $100 bills. <laughs> on a related point, in the year 2013, I predict The Economist magazine will suffer a series of increasingly dire financial setbacks, crippling its revenue base, and ultimately leading to its, if I may say, long overdue demise. <laughs> Upon the closure of the magazine, Economist Editor-in-Chief John Micklethwaite will issue the following statement. <clears throat> Unfortunately, due to the continued existence of The Onion, the continued existence of The Economist has been made not only unnecessary, but financially impossible. One simply cannot compete with The Onion in today's media landscape. One may try, of course, but down that road lies madness. I write to you now, a broken shell of a man, his dreams a dying ember, his heart a pool of sorrow. Sincerely yours, John Micklethwaite. Now, many of you are likely wondering what the future holds in store for the United States of America. Well, I'm happy to inform you that the future of America is a very bright one indeed. In the amazing future of 2013, America as we know it will cease to exist after our benevolent Chinese overlords finally arrive to incorporate the former United States into an agglomeration of communist provinces known collectively as New Macau. We must welcome our new Chinese rulers with open arms for they are our cultural and economic superiors. With this in mind, I would like to personally deliver the following message to our great, future great leader, Chinese Premier Wen Jiaobao. Greetings, glorious comrade of the Far East. I speak to you now from the epicenter of Western decadence and filth. The Onion anxiously awaits your invasion of our slovenly American homeland, and would like to remind you that esteemed journalistic institutions, especially those like ours, which are more than willing to compromise their claim to objectivity, could prove highly useful to your great nation's propaganda wing. Let us help you re-educate the American pig people and spread word of your magnificence. Elsewhere in the world, it is my prediction that the year, in the year 2013, Donald Trump will sit in a jacuzzi tub in the royal suite of the Hotel George in Paris alone, listening to the steady ticking of his $80,000 Patek Philippe watch and think to himself, you know what, I don't really want to be alive anymore. I don't really deserve to be alive anymore. And if I were to suddenly drown in this tub right now, that would almost certainly be a net gain for humanity. His dead, soulless eyes gazing vacantly into the middle distance, Trump will then seriously contemplate slouching his paunched, fake tanned, 66-year-old body slowly under the surface of the water like a clinically depressed manatee and lie there, the last bit of oxygen expiring in his lungs as he contemplates the fact that his life has held no meaning, no joy, no decency, and no goal beyond avarice and spite. I predict Donald Trump will consider ending it all right there for about 45 minutes or so. Unfortunately, I also predict that Donald Trump will be too much of a fucking pussy to go through with it. 
On a very different note, I predict that in 2013, Vice President Joe Biden will cruise by his old high school in a 1981 Trans Am, blasting the White Snake album Come and Get It from his tape deck. And I quote, seeing if the crop of young sweet peaches need any help with their homework, if you know what I mean. <laughs> what some of you may be asking, will the year 2013 bring in the world of popular music? Well, according to the latest advanced metrics compiled by The Onion, the number one billboard charting song of 2013 will be a song entitled, uh, I Have a Dick, by an artist named, by an artist named Assface. The number two song in America in 2010 will be a song entitled I Exhibit a Desperate, Some Might Say Unhealthy Psychological Need to Cohabitate with a Male Member of My Species by Taylor Swift. <laughs> in the year 2013, I am also able to project with an almost 99.9% .9 certainty that the American people will become even more outrageously fucking fat. Yes, the nation's chunkalunkas, chubba wubbas, and roly poly butter bowls will continue to waddle around the country's food courts and chain restaurants like morbidly obese penguins, emitting a series of grunts, wheezes, and gurgles from every orifice. <laughs> Pie and cake will continue to be eaten by the average American at a rate that would send the average hippopotamus into a diabetic coma. Major arteries surging with plaque will wonder why exactly they are being punished. Also, a rise in child obesity will most likely produce an unsustainable number of tuba players. <laughs> in other official news, in other health news rather, I predict that a new medical study published in 2013 will link all known forms of cancer to the consumption of omega-3 fish oil pills. 100% <laughs> of people taking omega-3 fish oil pills will die of cancer, researchers will argue, and anyone in this room who has ever at any point in their life consumed such a pill will die of cancer. Uh, other substances found to be deadly in 2013 will include bee pollen, witch hazel, vitamin C, D, and E, and whole grains. <laughs> in the world of environmental science, I predict that at some point in the year 2013, a group of 60-year-old men in suits will gather in a conference room in Switzerland and say the words climate change a lot. <laughs> the men will make serious faces, nod grimly, say the words climate change some more, take a break for lunch, come back. Say the words climate change 20 or 30 more times, break for the day, and then come back the next day and do the same thing all over again. The result of this 12-day meeting will be a stack of papers with the words climate change written on them. <laughs> also in 2013, I predict that God, our Heavenly Father, after a 3,000-year break, will finally continue the practice of smiting and will immediately smite with the wrath of 20,000 imperial cannons the following people. Jim McAvoy of Dearborn, Michigan, Marsha Ross of Scottsdale, Arizona, the Moschka twins, Dieter and Klaus of Wittenberg, Germany. The entire country of Moldova. Grammy Award nominated rock group, The Kings of Leon. TV legend, Alan Alda. Toucans, every toucan. And every member of the Westboro Baptist Church. Now, incidentally, and this is very exciting, God asked, specifically asked me to pass along the following statement to you all today. Hello, I do not love you. In fact, it will be my great pleasure to watch the planet I created destroy you in the coming decades. Incidentally, my favorite animal species is the ring-tailed lemur. They are much better than humans. Enjoy what you pathetically refer to as the 2013th year. Eat shit and fuck yourself, God. <laughs> now, as I have just demonstrated, it is fairly clear that the year 2013 is going to be a banner year, not for any of you per se, but for myself and roughly 800 other insanely wealthy people. For the rest of you, here is my advice for the following year. Be kind to one another. Try to love and respect your fellow man. Promote harmony and brotherhood across the planet. And then when they least expect it, embroil everyone you know in a devastating Ponzi scheme, bleach your hair, and move to Aruba. Good luck and thank you. Okay, I'll go over here. Can I sit there? Well, if you like. No, I'll actually, I'll do that. <clears throat> um, so I'm, I'm loving your politics here. Oh, and, thank you. Uh, I, do you know, this military adulterous complex is mm -hmm. the thing that's been kind of really obsessing me. And uh, I was wanting to ask you about the public figures this year. They're going to really humiliate themselves. Which public figures will humiliate themselves? Yeah, I think so. Um, well, Angela Merkel, the leader of Germany, will descend into a long bacchanalian spiral of drugs and male strippers and 
Uh, so expect that. It's going to get pretty rough, pretty ugly, pretty quick. Will there be leather involved? There will be lots of... It's Germany. There will be right. lots of leather involved. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, who else? Myself. I don't know if I count as a public figure, but I will be humiliating myself on a regular basis. Right. Um, but no leather. No leather. No, I haven't gotten to that point. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? Give me, a, give me a part of the world or a, a, an area of the world, and I will tell you who will humiliate Spain. Spain. Spain? Yeah, Spain. Oh, Spain. Mm. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, it's the accent. Or maybe the Italians. I mean, we always like to make Sure. Italian. I'm trying to think of the three Italian people I know. Well, there's Silvio Berlusconi. I can guarantee Roberto Benigni is humiliating himself right now. Oh, right. <laughs> still in 2012, so I don't right. know if that counts. And you've already dealt with Donald Trump, of course. Yes, of course. Um, yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. Who I, I had to remark, Donald Trump's Twitter feed, I believe, is slightly more amusing than The Onion's, just, but not intentionally. Yes. I feel, yeah. Well, he works for us, so there's a little bit of a... <laughs> That explains everything. Yeah. Actually, I was supposed to ask you one question, wasn't I? Yes, is that I it? think so. You're Could done? you put your hands together and thank Will Tracy, please, for me? Thank you. Thanks a lot.